Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another uh, question time interview. Uh, this time we're joined by Nico De Batista. How are you, mate? Yeah, all good, all good. Thank you. Just, just to be clear, that pronunciation, it was my, my touch there. <laughs> Spanish, Spanish pronunciation, isn't it, apparently? So. Yeah, yeah, but it's um, the same for me. We'll start first and foremost with the um, most obvious question that people are going to want to know. Um, what is going on with your hair? <laughs> I thought we were going to be serious. I don't know about my hands. My hair, I'm growing it. I'm going long. I'm going ponytail. Yeah? <laughs> Go, no, go, I mate, don't go one know. step forward, go top knot. Oh, I don't know. I just like lockdown. I just like obviously not being able to go to the hairdresser. I just, I don't mind. I'm just going to keep it. If it starts bothering me, I'll just like cut it. I, I was going to say, I went down the other route. I ended up shaving mine off in lockdown and now I can't really get past the growing backstage. So I just yeah. wear hats instead. <laughs> but, um, so what's... Um, what have you been up to in lockdown? Obviously, it's the first question I ask most people. Obviously, as a rugby player, it's tough. Um, have you stayed down in Cornwall or what have you been up to? Yeah, stayed here. Um, so I moved a day before lockdown. So I had a couple of things to do in the house, like which is painting walls, bringing furniture, that. Uh, but yeah, stayed down here um, with Laura, my girlfriend. I'm just, it was lucky because I was finishing, I'm studying. So I was finishing my semester. So I had time to just, put everything there and it gave me time to just like um, get it like right. I mean, what are you studying? Um, I'm doing graphic design. I'm just doing everything online. Oh nice. Um, yeah, it's a uni from Barcelona, so it's in Spanish. Um, I just, this is my second year. I have just finished my second year and I have two more. Oh, I do. I had, I had a similar thing. My lockdown kind of came at a good time because I weirdly, I. I just had to come up to submitting work from I'm doing um, like a, 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 a surveyor's assessment and mm. I had to submit all my work and it was perfect time just to sit down in front of you. I had two kids running around the background, but I still managed to get it done. So uh, it's good to see you made use of it. Unlike, well, some of the other boys have been building bars and uh, <laughs> doing Broncos on the field. So it seems like you've made good use of your uh, lockdown. And yeah. yeah. um, originally from uh, is it Rosario in Argentina? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. How did you, um, so your rugby journey, how did, what, what age did you start playing rugby and how did you get into rugby? Because although Argentina are a very good rugby team, it's not necessarily the national sport or such, is it? It's more of a footballing country. No, yeah, yeah, it was, football is everything there. Um, it was more about just going to the club to see my brothers like play and then just obviously telling my parents, oh, I want to play, I want to play. And I just probably started, I don't know, five or six, I don't know as early as possible and then yeah I just built it from there all, all the time the club um, and yeah yeah that was, that's that's quite a long time ago to do that, that now yeah didn't um didn't uh, is it Alberto Di Bernardo is that the same club he's from yeah it's the same club yeah well, he's obviously older than me so by the time I was like eight he's about my I'm, age he must be old <laughs> by the time I, by the time I just like um, you know you start like knowing people from the club or the, the, the ones who play in the first team or, or probably younger than 18 probably 15 you just hear his name and he was to, um, he played for the club for a bit and then he went to play um, obviously to Europe and then um, yeah luckily just I didn't know when he came back he just played for the Pirates played with Gavin Paves and did he play with you? Yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, and then just like obviously, which is when he came back, we we became good friends, and well, here I am now. Partly hey, yeah. then. I was gonna say, how I, that was my next question is, uh, how did you end up in England? Obviously, um, playing for Rosario, it's not, I mean, I'd never heard of it until I googled it, and that's just no. my naivety. Well, obviously, because of him, but at that moment, he was, um, he was a uh, one of the players playing um, like in, in, in um, abroad, so just my he he knew when he came back that I was looking to just for an experience to play out, outside, like just outside my country or play professionally, just to like improve everything. And and, and obviously he, he talked to Gab and um, he gave me a hand. Like then obviously if um, if I just didn't like to go and pay so I, I, I wouldn't be here but he just gave me that push just to like yeah do it you you won't regret it 
what's the um so we say that obviously football is the main sport in Argentina. What is it like uh, playing rugby out there? Uh, crowd wise, uh, what's the kind of general feeling? Uh, well, one obviously first team is everything. So um, when you're young, your parents and all like family go and just but. Is not that big. It's obviously it's not the same as here. Um, nowadays, it, it is due to like just the past World Cup or like the one we got the third place. That was like a massive thing there, and loads of people um, started into rugby. But in a final semi-final um, amateur rugby, you it's a good crowd to be honest. Like it would be like between two thousand and three thousand people. Yeah, watching. Nice. Did you yeah. ever? They've, got, they've always got. They've always had a good sevens team. I uh, not to rub it in, but we actually beat Argentina in the World Cup final. <laughs> uh, I, I had to mention it. I remember I had um, Diego San Diego Gomez Cora up against me. Yeah. And it was like coming towards one of the last plays, and it was basically me versus him, and he had about thirty meters on the outside of me. I've never been so nervous in my life. Top try yeah, scorer in world rugby at the time, but uh, he's he's a legend in sevens, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, no, he, he knew how to score a try, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Did, um, do you ever play any Tevins or have any interest in it? Um, well, we, yeah, I did. Not very interested in it. I like it. Uh, obviously, you've got to run a lot, and I'm not one of those. You've got to be quick, and I'm not one of those. Um, so you'd be a forward, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be a back. Oh, yeah, I was the hooker there. Yeah, I was loving it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I played. We, I played like, like, County level, so we used to like Rosario. Obviously, has um, his own team, and we used to play after all the season, just around December. There used to be like the county league or tournament or cup, and um, yeah, I played like two, three years there, and then obviously playing for fun with with the club, traveling around um, Argentina and just playing with, with friends. That's the thing about sevens for me. It was always an excuse to get some free traveling. So. Um... But we'll, we'll go back to 15s though. So obviously you had a um, had a first stint down the Pirates, but then you went over to Italy. Was it Zebra? How how do you say that again? My pronunciation is awful. Yeah, yeah, Zebra in English. In English, Zebra. If if you go Italian or Spanish, is Zebra. That's that I'm thing. Really yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It was um, it was a big jump, um, big league. Over there, obviously, Pro 14. Um, um, six Nations level, let's say, just a standard. It's like Six Nations, all the players. It was good. It was a good experience. Um, learned learned quite a few stuff. Few, just had a good time there. Obviously, got my Italian passport, so just going there, learning the language a little bit. Then just and you realise like that we obviously come from them. We just Argentinians. We are Italians. So I felt like back home. <laughs> What what's the difference in the kind of because although it is like the Pro 14 league and you're playing teams from is it like uh was it Ireland Scotland and you know what's the actual rugby at like because Italy Italy have got their own kind of brand of rugby and their clubs kind of go by it as well what's the difference between Italy and kind of England? Um, well, at least the team we were well I was um, it was like the opposite to what we do here in, in England. Here is very, very structured uh, game plan, um, loads of kicking um, strategy. Zebra was more uh, play, just um, um, in different brand of rugby, love. kind of not super rugby, but going more towards that way, just play, offload, try to keep the ball alive instead, instead of like slowing down and kicking and chasing. Like Bristol. Um, yeah, oh yeah, similar to Bristol, yeah. Um, but it takes a lot of time to just get that into the into the players. Um, so they just trying to keep like um keep doing it now just to get better at it. And what upon you obviously you signed back for the Pirates. How long were you out there for? I was one year, yeah, one season. How did you get on? Where did you finish in the league? Now, last, uh, we lost quite... I knew that was the answer. I wouldn't have asked the question. Sorry. Oh, no. no it's, it's, that's fine. But the, my, my experience went another way. It's just like, as I said before, playing against um, uh, Jonathan Davies or going to play um, not the Champions Cup, the, the Challenge Cup uh, against La Rochelle with a full stadium, um, stuff like that, that just makes you like think, Oof, look where I am. Um, even though I didn't play that much, but... Every time I played, uh, it's just 
it's different just like knowing who's in front and, and, and their career and just is a very good way to, to learn everything and to, to learn about the game, the, how to be more professional. So it went more for that way than just well with standing in the league. So also, it's also, it's kind of a good mental kind of exercise as well, isn't it? Because I always found that I, I've always, I'm always a really nervous player. I'm always worried before a game, not necessarily about the result, about my own performance. And I always doubted myself. I always thought that I was playing against people better than me. But if you've had a season and you're playing against Jonathan Davis, who, in my opinion, is probably one of the best rugby players in the world, mm. and then you find yourself on a Friday night down Meadow Lane playing against Nottingham, you should have the confidence after having that season to think, well, I can, I can handle Jonathan Davis. I can handle whatever's in front of me in this game. And that's one thing that I used when I was particularly nervous before games. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, I think you always approach the game, no matter who is in front, the same way. Um, obviously, there is an extra if it is um, a really good player or if it is no one that you just never heard about. But you approach the game always at the same time, or at least you try. Um, in my case, it was like, obviously, um, knowing that just great players, top players in the, in the world were in front of me, um, helped me to just be better or try to focus better or just everything was like double of what I've had to like do before. So, um, it, it just, it helped a lot. And obviously trying to bring that over here as well, just when I, when I came back, just to try to bring that here. So obviously you, you came back, um, last season you suffered a nasty injury, didn't you? What, what, yeah. did, what did you do and, and what was it like obviously being sidelined for so long? That was my first time I've been like that, like just more than, um, more than probably two months out. So it's just, but yeah, I was a bit unlucky to be honest, mostly because my parents were here. So they came here all the way here just to like see me play. And obviously it was up at Doncaster, they were there, but then um, just a bit about timing because I had to spend like obviously surgery after that. Um, Oh, just, it was pretty nasty. Like it was, it was dislocated. Like ligaments broken. Um, it was, it was bad. But it, it is what it is. That's the. I think that's rugby, and um, and I can't complain because then if you just people with like they're like a whole year without playing. Um, I just mine was only four months. Um, but still quite long for me. But great stuff. Um, Simon Gareth, everyone just like helped me, and then just. Yeah, now I'm just back to 100, percent and um, <laughs> I, I I haven't been I haven't played. See, it's going to be a year probably when we're back, and just it's going to be a full year for me without playing. Never happened to me, so I'm really looking you, forward. You to had it. a you had a game towards the end of the season, didn't you? Who did the? I remember because you came off the bench and you actually I played like yeah, I played five ten minutes. Yeah, you melted yeah. someone, didn't you? But decent shot. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably was a scare on my hands and just didn't do anything. I don't remember, but it was just like five minutes. Um, I remember you trying to be hitting because I remember saying that that was a good solid four months of frustration just unleashed on one <laughs> player. So <laughs> but no, yeah, definitely it's been a while. What um, what were your thoughts on last season in regards to? Not necessarily yourself, but the, the club, the performance of the squad and, and where we finished in the league. Oh, great. I think it's just, we're in a great position at the moment. Um, the quality of, of the players and, and, and about like just, we've been doing this game plan for just a couple of years now. When before my first year, it wasn't the first time we were doing it, which is we couldn't polish everything. It was more, now we're more about details. Everyone knows what they had to do. Um, beating Eileen, um, a bit disappointing, like playing Newcastle, but then they just they they came down and they just played another rugby and just up and downs and maybe just try to focus a bit more in in a couple of away games or or the ones like we're not easy but less complicated than other ones. Just try to get those points from those games that we couldn't get this season. That, that that would be a good focus for for next one. Um, Scottish is always um, tough for us, so that would be a really good challenge next year. Well, I don't know when, but when we play, when we back playing. Um, but yeah, I think our last season was really good, um, a really strong start of the season, um, and we just need to be able to hold that. 
it's funny because you mentioned Newcastle. I've interviewed a couple of people and I always tend to ask these questions at the end. And everyone always mentions the Newcastle away game as, um, as a disappointment because we have had such a good season that we could, we, you know, in theory, we should have pushed them that a little bit further. And everyone seems a little bit disappointed, which is a good thing, in my opinion, to, to expect to come away from something from Newcastle. I think that's a positive mind frame for the players to have. Yeah, yeah, it's from the way I see it, um, we need more. That's not enough what we've been doing. Um, yeah, we get good wins, uh, but we need to be um, regular, like just build up and finish very strong and, and try to like focus on every game the same. Um, maybe we feel that we give more importance, more to Newcastle, and then we're more nervous or, or we try and to do different stuff against the team when we have to be doing the same stuff that we did like with other teams against Ealing the first game or second game, I don't remember, where we have like really good performance there. Just try to mimic that into every single game, no matter if it is Newcastle or, or Saracens next uh, season or whoever it is, just keep that regular path or keep that curve going up and building the game even more. It's interesting you said earlier that when you first joined, it was like the first season doing that game plan, but now we're a couple of seasons into it and the focus has gone from understanding the game plan to, you know, the finer details. So the intricacies of not when to kick, but how to kick and where the chase is and the cradle and, and people messing up the breakdown and stuff like that, which I think will mean that you have more consistency throughout the year, isn't it? Because you focus on those points when you play the tough teams, but then you take them for granted when you play the, for lack of a better word, the lesser teams. Yeah. And that's, that's where we kind of have slipped up the tourist over the last couple of years, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's because maybe we think, oh, we can play more. We can just make more damage doing this other stuff against this other team. And, um, and, the reality is you should play the same every game. Um, obviously, things can change. It depends on, the, on, on their game plan and, and stuff like that. But now it's like we're realising um, when we can run. Now the options of running from the back, they're open now because everyone is expecting for us to kick maybe. Now we have the ability to just kick, run, or kick on the move or play a couple of phases, which is we get into that detail of game management a little bit deeper instead of making always the same decision. Um, so we have the, the chance to, to see it in the moment. Uh, that's what we train at the moment, just see what's in front. That's what really important when before, when we started, it was all about kicking and maybe chasing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but now we just, we're learning um, how to do everything. But as a as a winger, it, you always knew you were playing a good team. When when you're up, they kicked over your head, and when you're back, they ran it. Yeah. And that that's you know that's in the first year, obviously the first year of the game plan. Like you said, it's very rigid, and it's just repetition, 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 and playing the numbers. But now that we're at a stage where it's no longer that, and it's more, it's a framework. It's slightly more flexible. That it's repetition, repetition, repetition to create an opportunity. But when that opportunity is on, then you exploit that kind of that gap as such. Um, what are you what are you hoping for for this year? Obviously, I know there's uncertainty, um, but what are you hoping for to achieve? Have you got any goals, personal goals, or goals as a squad or a team? Um, well, as a team, um, it's hard to say. Um, it's hard to say without a starting date. Um, but obviously, no doubt, um, we want to be better than last season. Um, again, going for that um, curve um, of building up the game and building up the season to, to finish very strong. Uh, but at the moment, as a team, I think um, the focus today would be keep as fit as possible, just be ready to when the thing gets moving, um, just be ready to be 100% and, and train really hard because. It's going to be weird for everyone, but if we just if we take this time to be ready for that moment, um, we'll have a great advantage um, from the rest. A lot of um, a lot of clubs are taking different approaches. I, I did some googling, so I, my figures could be well off here, but 
if you wanted to go and start training now as a club, I think it's something stupid like thirty to forty thousand pounds a month to make sure that everything is done properly in terms of checking temperatures, PPE, safety, sanitizing, and stuff like that. Um, and some clubs are investing in that time because ultimately it's going to be whoever gets the best start will build the momentum. Um, how confident are you as a pirates that we're going to be able to flick that switch? From because you know they could turn around and say right, the season starts the second week in September, and all of a sudden your pre-season's gone from what's it normally twelve weeks to about yeah, yeah. to about six or seven weeks. How confident are you that the pirates can handle that? Oh, hundred percent. I know boys and everyone, but uh, like players, coaches, staff, they're all just waiting for that date to to just get back on it. Um, it's been four months and I'm. Everyone, obviously we had a long break it's going to be different everything is different um everyday life is different but we as professional rugby players we just i know we're ready so um obviously speaking with you guys and and everyone's doing the, the right stuff to to just to get to that moment and, and, and flick like to we're starting now we go now well as i say i will um i will leave you getting peace uh go in peace for the afternoon but i just personally I'm really looking forward to seeing getting you back on the pitch. Um, we were very lucky last year that when you kind of got injured, uh, Patterson really stepped up and had some outstanding rugby. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that battle between you and him to get a side spot because I think it will only improve both of you and also improve the team as a whole. So mate, I wish you the best of luck in pre-season and I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing you out on the pitch again. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just I couldn't agree more with you. So... Um, everyone uh, it's going to be tough um, for every player because the squad is pretty good um, so it's going to be a lot of competition but that will make us uh, just even better so I hope everyone um, keeps training and, and just and we get back as soon as possible thanks um, for, for, for the interview yeah no worries mate take care and we'll see you around soon alright thanks <laughs>